everybody. The Bible said I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Anybody come to bless him today? No matter what I see 
Let me thank you for your mercy. Our Father, I come in the name of Jesus. Give me the glory and give me the honor. I ask my Father that you would move today. We commit this service unto thee. For you are worthy to be praised. Have your way today, Lord. Move in a mighty way. Show us your mysteries and your revelation. Father, move by your spirit. For this day, Father, we worship thee. We give you glory, we give you honor. We praise your holy name. We glorify your majesty.
Kowalski says, and we know all things work. Somebody in the class say all things work. You notice what it did not say. Did not say he would like it. Did not say he would understand it. And the old school folks say you'll understand it better. Oh, 
for a few weeks. That means George Brown come scared, come afraid, because watch this. I'm his son. You're his daughters. Come on, the class say, I'm a child of God. And because you are a child of God, listen, your kids don't have no problem coming from busting in your room. I'm sorry, mine's dead. And some of them still don't. Because they understand that if you, as long as you're in my house, you have access to wherever I am in my house. Because you're my child, you have access. And because you and I are God's children, he said we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Which means there's something at the throne that God has waiting for me. And so I can take all my cares and cast my cares. He said, casting all your cares upon him. Why does not why? Because he cares for you. Would you encourage the person by and say, he cares for you, baby? He cares for you. Because sometimes I can be going through a thing. And even though I know a person may love me, loving me don't mean you care for me. He says, cast all your cares upon him. Because he cares. Now you know he loves you because he died for you. But it goes beyond just dying. He cares about you. Listen, you know, God is so concerned. God is concerned about every area of your life. I mean, even the small, minute stuff. How many of y'all ever had God do some stuff for you that you didn't even ask him to do? Some stuff you've been waiting for somebody else to go ahead and do for you. You said, well, so-and-so got it, and God used somebody else to do it. Come on. You say, well, God, that wasn't really that important on a scale of one or ten, but God did it anyway. Somebody said, he'll do it anyway. You all tell you, God is so concerned about the small things. In our lives. And so you and I have to be uh, 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 aware that we serve a God that who knows the way that we take. He knows when we sit down, he knows when we get up. God knows everything about you. And whatever concerns you, concerns him. The Bible says this He is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Which means God said, I can identify with what you're going through. Oh, yeah. And so, come on, have you ever felt like God didn't know where you were at? Besides me, come on. And you say, come on, God. I can, maybe God can take a break. And God said, I am just with the feelings of your infirmity. He said, what you're going through, I know. Let me give you a, 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 a phrase that you know say. God said, don't worry, I feel you. Somebody said, he feel me, he feel me. He feel me. He feel me. Mark chapter number 10, I want to look at verse number 46, 
If you can stand as you stand for the reading of the word. I'm going to read extensively, so please bear with me. Usually I read one verse, but you can see all of this. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46. It says, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway begging. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many church folks, I'm sorry, many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped in his tracks and said, tell that boy to come in. And they called the blind man saying to him, be of good comfort. Arise. He calleth me. And he cast away his garment. Watch this now. He cast away his garment. Rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately, somebody say immediately. Immediately he received his sight. And watch this. He didn't leave. I said he didn't leave. The Bible said he followed Jesus. Somebody say, neighbor, if you want something from God, then go after God. Let's pray. Father of heaven, thank you again so much for this time of sharing your word. Father, as always, it is my sincere prayer that you would hide your son behind the cross. And I pray, God, none of me and all of you speak through my lips and pray. Think through my mind. God, to encourage somebody. Call somebody's faith to be strengthened as a result of your word. I bless you and thank you for it in advance. It's in Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen. You may have your seats. Well, for the last few weeks, we've been dealing with this topic. And our subject matter has been entitled, Go for the Globe. And by now, I'm sure all of you have an idea that uh, God wants to, or God wants us to invite His presence, His glory, into our situation. And so the question you all is never does God want us to come. The question is how bad do you really want it? All right. All right. Because I've come to realize that there are some people you all who don't want the hand of God to move in their lives as bad as they say. I know it's not you, but there are some people who are, they build their whole life around having others to feel sorry for them. They build a whole career out of having someone else do for them so that the responsibility no longer falls on them. But when you really want something from God, you don't care how ugly it looks. You don't care what folks think about it. Because when you are going through something yourself, you don't really care what folks think about it. Either. Tell the person might say, I, I, I mean, don't, don't care what you think. See, if, if someone said the first one I you all ever play a game, is the first one over some place? Get the half XYZ. And there was a bunk rush going through a certain place. I guarantee you, if I said, yo, listen, there's a thousand dollars in a brown bag by my car, the first one that can have it. This place would empty out. Especially all the broke folk. 
They were running fast as they can, howling, screaming, whatever it took. Because they want to be the first one to get to that man. Because you know when you broke, you do whatever it takes. Come on, somebody say, me, come on. I might, I might beat you running myself. We'll do whatever it takes to get to that bank because, watch this, there is a need in that bank. When it comes to God, family, I don't care what folks think. When, when God has something for me, when I'm in need of a healing, in need of a deliverance, in need of a breakthrough, in need of a touch from God, I don't care what folks think. I don't care what folks say. If God is going to touch me, then I'll do whatever it takes to cause the hand of God to move in my feet. And I wonder how many in the house this morning say, I'll do whatever it takes to get the hand of God to move in my feet. You see, I know some of us, y'all, we have uh, we have more degrees than a thermometer. That's fine. Some of us are too cool and sophisticated. But as I was saying on the stream last week, there is a test that will test you. There is something that can come upon you that will push you to the place that you don't care what nobody says or what nobody thinks. If God is here to touch me, then God, here I am. God, whatever you need me to do, God, I'm going to do that because I want you more than the opinion of other people. Oh, if I'm in the house today by myself. And so understand you all, this morning I want to take this from you all in a whole different perspective because the question becomes then, what do you do? When God is the one who, who has allowed something to come up in your life. When God is the one who gave you your okay. I'm sure if you were to ask Job, Job, how did you feel when God gave Satan the okay to come and test you and try you? I'm sure if Job would have answered the question, he would tell you, you know what, I didn't know what God was doing, and if God had asked me, I knew some more folk God could have given that pain too. I'm sure if Job would have been asked, he'd have said, there ain't no way in the world I would have really had my all, all my kids gone. Come on, maybe one kid died, but all my kids died. And Job gets you see, see, Job, y'all, wasn't just rich, Job was loaded. Yeah. Job was the richest man that's it. That's the in the region. Uh -huh. Now, you can say go from rags to riches. This man went from riches to rags. Hey. Uh -huh. Lost everything. His friends were tweaking. I'm sorry, tripping. And then his old wife, Miss Job. Come on. She said, Job, I'll tell you what, what you're going to do. All right, Pastor. Just don't curse God. And go die. Oh, what if you have some friends like that? Because what they were doing was trying to put all the problem on Job. And how many folks let everything that happens in your life is it necessarily your fault? But there are some things you know, that God will allow in our lives. Watch that because God wants to, to test our faith. And even though He knows. He wants you and I to know where our faith is. Because it's one thing to talk faith in the house of God. But if your faith does not follow you to your house. Because up in here, at least two folk got faith. Look at the person by the and say, give it you, give it you, give it you. At least two folks in here have faith. But see, when you go home, the person by you ain't with you. And you need your faith not working in church. I need my faith working when I get home. And so there are some times that God then will allow us to all want this to be placed in an uncomfortable situation. Don't miss this. To be placed in an uncomfortable situation. Watch this. To find out if we will begin to execute what we've learned. Yeah. How many of y'all, when you were in school, you really didn't didn't like to take tests? I did. I would study all week. I cram on Friday. Get to school, heart beating fast, and she said, "Turn the book number so and so." Oh, dear God, here we go, here we go. Put the test in front of me, go bam. 
think about this. Got the test in here. The book open here and still fail the test. Come on, don't look at me funny. Anybody beside me ever fail the test? I don't know what it is, but you fail an open book test. That's pretty bad. See, y'all was acting all of me funny a minute ago, but the person by you, they failed too. Now, what is now? There are so many Christians, y'all, who are failing open book tests. That's real good, Pastor. I knew it was. There are too many Christians who are failing open book tests. The Bible is open on your table. It's open in your car. Come on now. It's open on your dresser. But you go back and read me every day. And God says, read it. God, I'm busy. I got to go. And then when tests in our lives, the reason we fail is because we don't look in the book. Oh, I tell the person, I said, you got to look in the book. And so I, 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 I pose this question to you all because understand, you and I are God's children. Yeah. And the question becomes, what if God wants to show off his power through his children? Right. Yeah. See, George, since I'm going to experience trouble anyway, oh, yeah. if God wants to show off his power, uh -huh. and since I belong to him, yeah. how come God can show off his power and use me? Uh -huh. right. See, you think the devil is bringing everything in your life. Sometimes God allows things in your life because God wants to show off his power. Watch this, not just to you, but to the person sitting by you. Oh, let me give you some Bible. See, see, when you read the book of Acts, it almost appears that God forsook Paul and Silas. They went to jail. They were beat with many strife. Fasten in the deepest part of the jail, but watch this. The Bible said after they finished praising and singing praise to God, the jail opened up. But that wasn't God's plan. The plan of God was around verse number 30. But that when they got out, the very people who beat them were the very ones who gave their heart to Jesus. And so God used their test, He used the trial with them. In order to save somebody else. And I wonder if there anybody here who said, God, whatever it takes to save my, my son, God, then use me. Whatever it takes to save my daughters, my family members, God, if you can use my test and get the glory out of my test, as long as they get saved and give their heart to you, then God, do what you got to do. See, one of I learned, or that my family did, I pray my, my kids did, that see, there is no known cure for cancer. Uh -huh. Not known cure. Uh -huh. If they have one, I they didn't tell me about it. Uh -huh. But one of the things they, one of the experiences, the experiences my kids had the, the pleasure of having is seeing how their father walked through it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now I I'm like the man said, I had some good days. Come on. It has some bad things. But watch this. When they saw me, it always looked like good things. Y'all miss that? Because when they saw me, I wasn't complaining. Oh, dear God. Got to go back to the hospital one more time. Oh, dear God. I'm feeling weak. Oh, dear God. They don't do this to me. Oh, dear God. When they saw me, get my head up, my shoulder square, and say, hey, what's for lunch? What I was showing them is that it's not that you won't go through a test, but it's how you go. It is how we go through a test that determines how long we stay in the test. Because watch this, when it was all said and done, go, God was the one who still got the glory. And so now, you know, I like joke if God had to ask me, I said, God, no. No, 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 but God, I do know somebody. Y'all playing real safe now. How many of y'all, if God would have asked you, you said, God, wait a minute, I know somebody, if you just got to do 
But he understands if I can make a big enough sound, I'll move you out of faith. I'm going to say it again. He knows if I can make enough noise, I'll move you out of faith. I, I, I'm proving to you. See, watch this. There are some folk who, who the devil gives those, call, they, they call them phantom pain. Went to the hospital. Doctor, I don't feel good. What's wrong? I don't know. I don't feel good. They checked you everywhere. We won't see nothing. Doctor, are you sure? Watch this. You pay for a second visit. Do it. Do it again. Because the devil, what he wants you to do is to confess to what you feel. And even if it was not there, he'll tell you it's there. Right. To push you into fear. Yeah, if he can push you into fear, watch this now. He then has the right to bring on you what you were afraid of. Oh, oh I'll prove it to you. Oh. Job said, The thing I fear the most. That's, right. That's what came upon me. Right. And there are many of us who are walking in fear of something happening in our lives. And the devil said, I wasn't planning, but since you brought it up, I get to. Oh, I'm coming today. See now, see, because even now, some of them are telling you, you don't qualify to be God's child. You really ain't God's child because y'all, truth be told, sometimes you don't feel like you're a Christian. Y'all, no, no, no. no, keep this one. I'm sorry. Not that you. Sometimes I don't feel like I'm saved. It ain't based on what I've done. I don't wake up every morning speaking in general. I'm sorry. How many of y'all do that? In the morning, you wake up. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I don't open my eyes without prophesying. Come on. It's best when folk get on my dirt. But survivor, I have to know that I'm a child of God even when I don't feel like I'm saved. <laughs> No, I said, I have to know that I'm a child of the Most High God, no matter how I feel. Come on, I must know that when the enemy attacks me, I am a son of the Most High God. It don't matter how I feel. I'm still his child. See, over in 1 John, over in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, what's going to them gave him power to become a son of God. Right. Let me ask you all. How many of you are You say and you know you say. Oh, yeah. I'm going to look. Now, by reading a red in your head, it was suggesting that you receive God as your as your father and his son as your Lord and Savior. Oh, the Bible says if you've done that, then you are a child of the Most High God. Oh, yeah. Somebody declare and say, I'm a child of God. And so what is now, it is clear then that you and I have the right to expect, the right to invoke the presence of God in our situation. Right. Now, oh, yeah. here you all is what the devil does. What the devil does is come and bring confusion in your house. Uh -huh. He brings confusion in your life. Yeah. Come on, he'll bring stuff up in your life to want this to keep you and your friend or someone from coming together and agreeing to get God for a breakthrough in your life. Because the devil knows there's power in agreement. Come on, because there's power in agreement. See, look at Matthew 18, verse 19. Look at what it says. It says, again I say to you, unto you, that if two of you shall agree, y'all watch the verbiage, if two of you shall agree. If two of you shall agree. If two of you shall agree. Watch this now. Which means that if did you say if two of you, the suggestive thought there is, it's hard to get two folk on the same page. Woo it's hard to get two folk on the same page at the same time. I'll prove it to you. You wouldn't be having so many divorces if two folk got on the same page at the same time. Wouldn't have all this controversy on the job if two folk would just get together at the same time. Okay, I'm going to go. You wouldn't have all the confusion in church if two folk got together at the same time. But they 
enemy knows if I can get God's children divided, then the power cannot flow. But happily so that if you and I can ever get on the same page, then the power of God will flow in a supernatural and tangible way. Somebody say, it'll flow, it'll flow, it'll flow. And so what the enemy does then you he brings what this the thing called confusion. Come on, class, say confusion. He calls this confusion. He calls this discord. He'll bring it in your home. He'll bring it on your job. He'll bring it on your block. He'll bring it on your church. He does not care what he brings it. He knows that if I can get it in there, then the power of God can flow. And James 3.16 says this, For where envy and strife is, there is what is confusion and every evil work. Pastor, what does that mean? That means if the person by you can't stand you, you better change your seat. Because, Brother Reds, if you can't stand Elder Tori, he can't pray for you. And you sure can't pray for him. We're talking to say, uh, Father God, in Jesus' name, strike him down. Strike him down. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Come on. And you'd be surprised how many church folk. Why in church smile, come on, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. But the person you mad at, God wants to bless you through them. And you so evil and contagious that God can't get a blessing to you through them because you think that God want to use your boo. No, God wants you the very person you can't stand. See, 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 see. I realize if God want to bless me, I don't care who God uses. If God wants to get something to me, I don't care if you never talk to me. Because the Bible said, God said, I will cause your enemy. God said, I will cause your enemy. The person you know can't stand you, God said, I will make them. And so, and so, watch this now, watch this, watch this. And so, when we look at, 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 at Mark 3, verse 25, God did just say, a house divided. Right. Against itself, uh -huh. cannot stand. You cannot have a successful marriage if you're divided in the same house. Ooh, that quiet up in here, Jesus. You can't have a job to flow freely if y'all in the same on the same workplace and that's a divided house. Come on, that y'all sleeping in two, in two different rooms. Y'all man, no, I ain't talking to you today. Listen. <laughs> I mean, oh, one time this girl decided she would be mad at me and she was there and she was mad and she you know, she wasn't talking. And so the first time she went by, she wouldn't say nothing. We gave her one pass. On the second go through, because she had to come back. On the second pass. You mad at me? Just look. Give me a hug. Now I know she didn't want to. <laughs> Tell the truth, Pastor. Well, oh, oh, y'all laughing now, huh? Okay. I'm gonna find my brother's name. <laughs> she ain't wanna hug, come on, hug me, girl. Come here, hug me. Hug me. Because I realize mean like this. That if 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 God is going to do something mighty through us, He won't do it through us when we separate in the same house. Are you hearing me? Which means that God is expecting us to be on the same page. We may not always see eye to eye, but somebody can agree. This is how we're going to do this today. Are you here? Somebody say, I know that's right. And so, what's it, you all? I got to hurry up. And so, in other words, the whenever the presence of God presents itself, our job is to take the advantage of the presence of God. You were called the man over in John chapter 5. The Bible said for 38 years he was laying at the pool. Yeah. Now watch this. For 38 years he's laying at the pool and he wants to be healed. Uh -huh. Here comes Jesus and stepped over all these folk yeah. to get this one man because he knew he'd been there for 38 years. Yeah. Which means maybe God will step over somebody else to get to you. Yeah. Ooh, somebody said, I know he'll do, he'll do, he'll do it. Maybe whatever God got to do to get a blessing clean for him, if God got to go around somebody, he'll do it. Because God wants to bless you. Now 
work now. Here's the problem. Here's what you didn't see in the text. When Jesus ran to the man, here it is. The glory is there. Uh -huh. Watch this now. The glory, the presence of God is there. Yes. In Christ Jesus. Uh, yes. He gets to the man and said, uh, Sir, uh -huh. will thou be made whole? Uh -huh. Now watch this. Here it is. The man began to respond out of his pain. Yeah. I said, the man began to respond out of his pain. That's the one you're saying. Because sometimes you can be in something so long that publicly it appears you want to be free. But privately, you already given up on it. And I am wondering how many of God's children that while they are in church, they're saying, yep, God going to do it. God's going to do it. But when they get home, they already said, I guess God didn't do it again this week. But I want to give anybody in the house that says, I will do whatever it takes to get God to heal my body. Whatever it takes to cause the hand of God to move, I, all I want is God to move in my life. Something sounds like God move in my life. Move in my life. Now what's this going? You're going to move. Here it is. Jesus had just met Jericho. Historians say he was on an 18-mile journey to the next town. Yeah. He had only got about 20 feet. And he hears somebody going, Jesus! Yeah. Thou son of David, yeah. have mercy on me. Yeah. Now, don't miss this. Notice, he knew exactly who Jesus was. Yeah. I said, he knew exactly who it was. Why, Pastor? How do you know? He said, Jesus, watch this, who has come through the lineage of David. And the Bible declared that the, the, the Messiah would come through the lineage of David. He said, Jesus, you the one. <laughs> he said, Jesus, I know it's you. You are the one. Somebody said, he's the one, he's the one, he's the one, he's the one. He said, you are the one, Jesus, thou son of David, have what is mercy on me. Now, watch the old man. Almost done. Mercy means to, to give me what I know I don't have the right to. Uh, see, because when I done wrong, it's not that I didn't do wrong, but I throw myself on the mercy of God. He said, have mercy on me. Now, the folk around him told him to shut up. Yeah. Now, what's this, y'all? Hear what I believe. Because there is a praise inside of you that will disturb the devil in your name. I'm going to figure that again. There is a praise inside of you that will disturb the devil in the person sitting next to you. I'll prove it to you. Because if they said, Thou son of David, the suggested verb there is that he's connected with God. Why would you want to tell somebody to be quiet who's connected with God? Mr. Mary, if I know you are God's child and you are praying and you are calling on God, I'm thinking, God, I don't know what he's asking you for. Oh, I ever think God, God, give it to her and give me one too. Come on, God, I don't know what she's praying for. Me heal God, heal her, and heal me too. If she be one of God, bless her and bless me too. If she want to house God, give her one and give me one too. They said, Father man, shut up. Hey, hey. 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 And the Bible said that one of man was so desperate, yeah. he got louder. Yeah. 
said there was a great multitude. You got a bunch of folk. How do you hear one man in a crowd? Because there is a sound that one can make. Yes, yes. And I don't care what anybody else is doing. Jesus. Come on, anybody ever heard your kids go, You say, wait a minute, that's still shouting. There's something wrong with her. Come on. Come on. Had your kid hurt a hand or something? They holler, This man said, You don't get it. You can see. I'm blind. You know where he is. I just know he's here. But if I hop, oh, if I hop, if I open my mouth, maybe I don't see him. But if I holler loud enough, he, he'll see me. And the Bible said, he stopped. Look at Curry, he stopped. He said, He says, oh, we help y'all read the whole text. Oh, give me some salt, please. I can do that. Because in this text, or in the context of the text, if you go up further in the chapter, here it is. There were two sons of Zebedee who were searching for uh, prestige in Jesus' organization. They said, Lord, when you enter in, let me be on the right and the other on your left. They wanted prestige because Jesus asked them the very same question, what can I do for you? And they made it about them. In this text, in the original Greek, Jesus said, no, that, that y'all is bad English, but I'm going to talk my, my, my best to say it. Jesus says, in the original text, he says, he says, what you want me to do for you. Which means he turns it around, not what can I do for you, but what can you believe me to give to you. And the man who been blind, understand, not just blind, y'all, but he was for second. That's the way you say it. Timaeus, who was his father, was a man of prestige. But because he was blind, he was placed into a colony, ostracized from his family, and left on the corner to beg. How would you feel if your daddy got money, put you out the house, and say, go get it yourself? Here it is. He's now in a crowd of folk. Where folks who would see him would give him money. But he became so desperate that he wanted a miracle. Watch this, he wanted a miracle more than he wanted money. See, you crying for money, he said, God, forget the miracle, give me all God, give me money. No, if it don't give a dime, give me a miracle. Come on, if I never get a house, God, give me the miracle I need. He just says, What can I do for you? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. He wanted something more than money. He wanted to see. And your Bible says, when Jesus said, come, watch this. He took off what identified him as being blind. Now, here's the part, Pastor Marshall, that we don't see. And my Bible doesn't tell us. How can a blind man run to Jesus? He can't say. My buddy took off running. Watch this. He took off running what he heard. And the Bible said he came running to Jesus and took off his coat. Understand in those days, they wore garments that identified their disease. And, and in essence, he was saying, I'm born to Jesus. And I don't need this no more. Woo, come on. I want to get anybody in this house that God will this to on me. I don't need this no more. He took off his God. And Jesus said, Give me the, 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 the last verse. He said, go that way. 
holy ghost thy faith has made thee whole now that word whole means what's your everything he lost he got it back y'all missed that everything he lost watch this including Because you're looking at God, I lost this, I lost that, I lost this. No, God said, I'm going to give you everything you lost. I'm, I'm making you whole. Some of the Lord, make me whole, make me whole, make me whole. And what's it, y'all? In the part that I, I caught this morning, the Bible says, and he didn't go back to his house. Like some folk get a miracle and leave church. I know a girl. This this girl got out of a wheelchair. She came to church for a few weeks, disappeared. I'm like, how can you leave the place where God freed you? Well, I know folk God healed against. And the place God healed them, they left it. The Bible said that Barnabas followed Jesus. Say, Pastor, why did he follow him? He meant you actually. He was, this is your walking testimony. That I'm the son of God. Because watch this, while he was on his way to be crucified, he had the miracle he performed walking next to him. So when folks say, you can't be the son of God, you can't look and see what a man said. Yes, I can. Yes, I am. I got it because only a God can do this. And there's somebody here with the miracle you need, only God can do. And so the question becomes, can God use your life? Allow us to be a comfort for a few days uncomfortable. Just to heal us. And allow others to see what God has done. So, so much. I know when you were going through the hospital. Come on, on 18 days unconscious. Doctor okay. said you were, wasn't going to live. He said you were going to die. Told your husband, make plans. Call an undertaker. Because in a few days, he's going to be up out of here. But he wouldn't count on God. Come on now, yeah. There are some folk in your life who already carried you out. And they say it's not going to happen. But I dare you to tell somebody, say, watch God come through. Watch him come through. Watch him come through. Come through. Don't ever give, don't ever count God out. Don't ever count God out. I said, don't ever count God out. Because as long as there's breath in your body, and even if when you factor in God, God knows how to bring you right back. Y'all ain't doing it. Y'all rest today. I'm just going to say. Hallelujah. Amen.